Vamos ver se Okay, adoption of the agenda. Are there any public comments on the adoption of the agenda? I'll now close the public comment period and there will be no further public comment allowed for this segment. Is there any motion to adopt the agenda? I would like to pull something from the agenda. That's fine. You can make it. Yeah. What would you like to pull? I'd like to make a motion to pull 8C. Uh, that was a came in kind of late and we needed to go over it. And I did go over it, but it needs to have a have discussions on it. Sure, that's fine. We can table that till next meeting. Till, um, and, well, and I recommend it goes back to the policy. Committee. It was, yeah, it will go back to the policy committee first. That's fine. You can pull eight C then. Environmental compliance policy. So is that a uh, motion to that's adopt it? Exclusion yet? I uh, make a motion to adopt the agenda, pulling eight C, having eight C go back to the policy committee. And come on a later agenda to the board. A second. Motion seconded by Director Thornbrough. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passes five to zero. Agenda is adopted. <clears throat> public forum. Please note the guidelines for the public forum as they appear in the meeting agenda. As a reminder, under the Brown Act, the public must address all their public comments to the board, not to the staff or other members of the public. And due to the Brown Act limitations, the board is not able to discuss or take actions on items on, not on the agenda. Public forum is now open. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we'll do. Yes, sir. Sure. Just speeding it up, like uh, not advertising somewhere. <laughs> so, what did you read at the beginning that made a change? Uh, we're going to be following the Brown Act guidelines more strictly and following instead of more of a town hall forum dialogue, uh, public, you know, that we're going to be presenting uh, each segment in its entirety before public's going to comment. You'll see as we right. go. Along. So you're, you're, the board is going to use the Brown Act? We've always been. Oh, not the Brown Act, the, uh, oh, the parliamentary. That's sort of. not coming. Robert's no. rules? No. Nothing Robert is. No. Sure. We're opening, and, we're having a special opening session for public comment where we will receive the comments. We're not going to have like a, a, a back, yeah, we're trying to limit, yeah. like, we're having now. like we're having now. Like yeah. we're having now. Yeah. Yeah. So we're gonna... but, but we'll count that as part of, you do, which is, is this, are you on? Uh, yeah, I, I just want to um, okay. say something that tonight from six to eight, Garden Valley Fire is having a presentation by El Dorado County for uh, vegetation reduction around homes. And then they're going to be targeting Stewart Mine Road now. So that's, um, and they're having like five of them all over the county. And nice. they, this is where they target the areas they target every year. Like last time, I think it was down in Garden Oak. Okay. So anyway, that's that's tonight at the Garden Valley Forest. Six to eight. Six Thank eight. you. Okay. Um, anyone else from the public? I, I'd like to jump in if you indulge yeah. me yes. before she goes her public comment. Yeah, this is regarding her public comment. Okay. Um, Morgan uh, Galliano is with uh, Forest Resource Collaborative, and I would just, this is going to be part of my general manager report as a good news update, but uh, the district was awarded a $1.2 million grant to do uh, Cal Fire wildlife, wildfire prevention. And uh, Morgan and her team at Forest Resource Collaborative wrote the whole grant, did all of the work. And so I have to give her a huge thanks and a huge shout out for the amazing work she did for this district. Mm -hmm. And um, I think she's gonna come up and ask for a partnership on another end, different different uh, process. But I just wanna first say that, you know, to thank you to Morgan and give her a public recognition for the hard work she has for the district. Thank you, Morgan. Yeah, um, you're welcome. This is kind of the first big project for the Forest Resource Collaborative. Um, we're a 
small nonprofit that just formed in 2022 in the universe um, wanting to bring more money onto the divide for forest projects, forest health projects, helping local landowners, um, uh, you know, do work on their property and things like that. So that's sort of our, our long-term goal is to help build the forest um, infrastructure on the divide. Um, I have notes so that I go over my three minutes, but um, so I'm also uh, obviously a volunteer with your uh, community grant advisory uh, committee. Um, and uh, our organization, you know, Forest Resource Collaborative, is applying for a grant through the California Strategic Growth Council for community, they call them community resilience centers. Um, the uh, centers are intended to help communities adapt to climate change related events and hazards um, to function both year round. Um, our year round function objective is to run forest related programs and then on an emergency basis to be able to open as like a cooling center or be able to distribute water or food or uh, provide charging stations, things like that. Um, the grant we're applying for is a planning grant. So it would be a two-year grant if it's awarded. As part of the grant process, um, the Strategic Growth Council invites applicants to meet, um, partner with, they call it a co-applicant on the application. Um, the co-applicant's role is really simple. It's basically just a formal um, commitment to be a stakeholder on the project and to advise during the planning and grant process if it's awarded. Um, so FRC wants to invite the um, GPUD organization to be a co-applicant with us. Um, I have a handout if so you can read a little bit more about the grants. Do you want me to just hand those out? Mm -hmm. Um, anyway, so I just wanted to invite um, your participation as a stakeholder and co applicant. I can give more background to Nicholas. And just to give a little update, I don't think there's any financial commitment from no. the district. It is more just a collaborative um, partnership. Thank you. Uh, Mitch, uh, we discussed this in the grants committee. So uh, during the grants committee report, I'll discuss a little uh, more on this as well. Okay. Thank you, Mayor Pesonet. Um Anyone else from the community? I think we're all going to get according to the new, what's that? I'm just asking, can we make sure this gets put in the meeting minutes or whatever on, on, the, on the website? Thank you. Thank you. Noted. Okay. Public forum is now closed. Okay. Uh, is there anything you would like to add to address these comments? Okay. okay. All right, consent calendar uh, approval of the minutes. I do have a public request to uh, pull from Bonnie Neely items B and C. I don't see an, uh, a reason for that. That's just my input, but that was a request from Bonnie. Anyone else on the uh, committee? No, she's not here. I make a motion to remove uh, item D. Um, to D. It would separately outside of consent. Okay. So you don't have to make a motion. You said to make a motion. You, yeah, we'll so, to remove. So, so you just yeah. make a, a request to remove it. So it's now removed. The motion can now be to accept yeah. the consent calendar sans uh, item 4D. Okay. Do I get a motion? Can I ask a quick question? Okay. How did you get this information? This should have come to the district. Or what information? Does someone contact you? Yes. Any member of the public. We received an email that was directed toward the president regarding an item being removed. So it's not up to the public to remove an item. It is up to the board to remove an item. So if you, any of you deem 
uh, more discussion for a consent calendar item, that is when it would be removed. Yeah. Sometimes I get those requests and the person is actually here like Cherie sometimes. So they'll just- it seems like you would have to be here so that you just take why it's more on removed. Yeah, so, right. I just, I just, okay. Do, can I get a motion to accept the um, consent calendar except for item 4D? So moved. Second it. All in favor? All right. Aye. Aye. Motion is adopted by to zero. Okay, item D, I just removed it just as a principle. Anytime we remove a member from the committee, we should at least have a discussion on it, even if it's gonna be a, a procedural one, just, just to make sure that it's uh, public transparency. And then our policy say that-, that we Yes, have to and do our it. policy also states right. that it has to be. Yeah. I will indulge if you if you allow me to indulge the, the yes, board. Mm -hmm. uh, we're removing Mr. Mead due to lack of attendance. Um, in fact, never attendance and part of as part of the irrigation committee. Um, our reg, uh, regulations state three consecutive meetings of non attendance and they can be up for removal. Um, it has been again no attendance and he's been on the committee for I want to say about 18 months or so maybe a little longer so it's, it's been a considerable absence and we'd like to get um, somebody into the committee that can uh, participate and, and maybe provide um, a perspective that we're not getting from this member. Mm -hmm. And to they're going to follow the also state a, a procedure for removing them and that the person being removed has um, opportunity. Yeah, opportunity to represent their, plead their case and all that right. sort of thing. So um, we would absolutely have done that, but we have noticed this at both the irrigation committee and at the board. And so I'm not sure how this person. Yeah, at this point, there's been no attendance in 18 months. I know initially it was, we were having the Zoom meetings, so. Uh, the idea was he'd be able to attend via Zoom. Mm -hmm. and once the Zoom option went out, his work will not allow him to be here at all. So. Yeah, but, but otherwise, some of us have been on committees without but our office. Staying down to this item, he has never attended, whether it was on Zoom or not. So mm -hmm. that's the end of kind of discussion. And the last one he was spoken to was last summer before I came on as the general manager. Okay. I make a motion to remove Eric Mead. Second. And I will just know that there is a oh, uh, a typo on the agenda. It's not the finance committee that should be here. Uh, good second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Removal of Eric Mead, member of the irrigation committee, consent calendar item four D. <laughs> Financial reports. 5A, budget to act as Nicholas. Um, if you want to just go ahead and read the consignment. Okay. No, no, on your, on your. Yes. Um, uh, I will now open to public comment. Are there any comments from the public? Uh, financial? All, all, all four items. All four, okay. if you will. Like sure. Anything you like. Okay. I don't understand the amount of money that changes every month. Like a year ago, it was 3000 January, it was 7000 uh, July, it's 5000 I thought, I mean, you know, that should go up and down if you have somebody retiring. But what is that dollar amount that's going out of the account? And it switches. It doesn't seem consistent. Is that... Your whole comment? Well, yeah, I just want to know why the it's not the same because you pretty much have consistent uh, retirees. Okay. Well, that's a revenue account, mm -hmm. so it depends on if they're paying their premiums. Right. So we're they don't all pay them at the same time. Okay. So, so somebody might pay two months at a time, and they're not consistent every month. Okay. It's reoccurring, so that it's you know help. The health benefits only change in January, or if they have a life changing event, okay, um, like a birth, marriage, divorce, anything like that. But it would only change, it should be the same amount for them typically every single month of the calendar year, okay. Um, but it is a revenue stream, so it depends on if they've actually paid it or not. So we have no penalties for them not paying it on time. Um, I would. 
Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll let, uh, let you public we'll, comment on the board. Or, the yes, board. yes. So we'll just kind of get into the mode of this. So uh, any, we'll comment on all these yeah, afterwards. Well, on the, we have the tech report. Go ahead and ask your question. Okay. The check 35066 um, for white Brenner. I'm assuming that's for like June. It was paid in July because she was here until the end of June. Is there a report? Because the July 1st through the July 30th report has appears to have checks that are from fiscal year 2022. 23 and the new fiscal year. Yeah, I'm currently okay. going through. Oh. That's okay. We'll catch up to after. Okay. Yeah. Any more sure? I mean, am I going to get an answer to that? Or? At the end of the whole financial reporting. Okay. Yeah. So, what, but my, my question is is there a report to where you can find the current fiscal year uh, charges? That's what I'm instead of, because this is a mixture when you get to. That's what I got. That's it. Noted. We'll swing back around. Any other public comment? Okay. How about from the board? Go ahead, sir. Uh, are, you, are, you, are you closing public comment? Uh, public comment is now closed. Okay. Okay. Open it up to the board now. Several comments. First of all, on uh, the cover page, the FY24. Budget to action. I appreciate um, looking at percentages as opposed to amount. Uh, everything is even across, and then the, we can determine the amounts. In the past, it was like a bar chart where everything was but in. For me, conceptually, the way I think, I appreciate having it. Um, some other comments on uh, page one of nine. Um, the irrigation uh, water sales, the second one down, that reflects, if I recall, four fifths of what was budgeted last year because we only had four months of um, irrigation sales in that fiscal year. Which which line are you looking at? There's the second one down. For, for You're talking about there's two budget reports. I'm looking at one of the uh, first one, uh, one of nine. Yes. What line? What line are you looking the at? The second line down from the top, the water sales. Oh, water sales. I apologize. It shows a, a minus of uh, two thirty five. And my comment is, is that I believe that that shows four months of irrigation sales as to what was originally budgeted for five. That, that's correct. I don't know if I'm allowed to stop or not. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you can have it. Oh, you look so sad. I was in trouble. Yeah, so this is fiscal year 23 end. So that would in, in last year because the the it was a I don't want to say normal, but it was the common water year, which was May through September. We pre charged for those water bills. So right now we're doing, we're charging for irrigation as it's being used, not you have to pay a month ahead of time. So it's going to look a little different because the fiscal year splits the water year. So last year it would have been July, August, September, except July and August were billed July 1st. So it's a little, it's going to be a little bit off. Yeah. And this year is going to be a little off because we have mm -hmm. six months of water. Change in the water. Crop, so. Well, we still have five months. No, we still have five months. We still, we still have five months. Five just months. how many have been pushed back yeah, for one month? Yeah. The five months have shifted and still going to be five months. I could do a different report that would show irrigation as the water year instead of the fiscal year. Okay. No, that's that's fine. I, I just wanted to point that out by looking at the big picture that the pictures change basically. Mm -hmm. And then on um, just a comment about the interest income, it's to me that reflects rises in prices as opposed to using this money for a specific thing. To me, this is as costs go up, so does the interest go up. Um, also, in the grant proceeds and the sale of assets. Um, 
those were not budgeted. So when we look at the minus unfavorable for those, for the uh, revenue for that year, those were not in the budget. So that really diminishes the, the bottom line there significant, significantly. And on uh, page nine of nine, or seven of nine, I apologize, reflects that same comment about, um, and also it shows that the capital outlay, outlay and uh, capital improvement costs were not budgeted. And again, that shows a significant difference between uh, the unfavorable costs and what was actually there. That's all for me. Any other board members? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the same problem that you know, just still we'll talk about in the fund summaries. So on page nine of nine for the first budget report, it shows the water fund original budget is one million one hundred forty thousand. Current budget one million one hundred nine. Period activity one seventeen. Fiscal activity negative five fifty two. But the variable is negative is like double that. It's one million six hundred sixty two as the variance. So. Yeah, it looks like uh, it's adding the 552 and the one. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that anyone that's negative, that seems to be the same throughout. So it shows on the. Um, on the fiscal budget report, the same thing occurs where it's a negative one million three hundred fifty six. Uh, in fiscal activity. I think it's a, a product of the end of the year and you want to address why it's negative. I think it has to do with the budget being entered incorrectly last year. And I'm just slowly, I was scrambling to finish the fiscal year 22 budget while learning how to do Tyler. And now that I'm all caught up with that, I'm now working on this last fiscal year, 22, 23, fixing the budget import. And so, the numbers are correct, but the negative, the variances, the variances aren't going to be right because the budget was entered as like a credit, mm -hmm. like we had an account with a balance and not something that it was drawing off of and comparing to. Yeah, because we see the same with capital reserve. It's mm -hmm. a negative three million variance and we spent 13,000. So. Thank you. The only comment I had is support Director Stovall wherever possible use percentages because one district with a large budget uh, it might look like a little or a lot versus a smaller district with percentages will. We're trying to we're trying to see if that's an option within the within the system. And I know there was a comment of making color coded percentages to make sure that they're uh, within reason. So. Is this like on track or not on track? That's also something that we're trying to work on to determine if we can make the system do that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I believe this is the portion where we would address the public. Sure. Uh, yes, I'd be happy to answer your question, Sheree. Um, Thirty. Uh, we had check number thirty-five zero six six. Yeah, I, I looked it up. What I believe is that's part of the transition. That is likely um, the June bill with a slight bit into July. They did do a little bit of work for us at the beginning of July to help with the uh, legal transition from White Brenner to BBK. There was um, some legal issues that we were facing um, with an employment uh, issue um, from a former employee that they were um, advising on as we were bringing on uh, Mr. Splendorio and his firm BBK. So I will get some more information. Um, as to when that was, I, I understand. Uh, I'm, yeah. I'm getting to your question. Oh, okay. Your your question was, will you get a clean fiscal report? And the answer to that is yes. Um, the end of year report will come out. We we have to wait until yeah. I believe the end of August is when we have to actually have that come out. So until it gets to the end of August, you will have a little bit of a you know kind of crossover, but you will have a special financial report that will be year end uh, close for fiscal year 22-23. That you'll be able to cross reference everything going backwards. Okay, what I was asking is how, because when you write a check in July and August. We closed public comment. Yeah, we, we closed public comment. Okay, but it didn't answer my question because it was about the checks. That was part of it. 
I mean, I just want to know if I can get a report that shows for the current fiscal year. A check for Nicholas, could you uh, follow up? Yeah, I think if you want to put in a PRA, we would be happy to give you a, a current check report for what's been done just for what? July. Yes. Okay, okay, for this year. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to informational items, board reports. Um, go ahead and uh, read the whole thing. Okay. We will receive all these reports and we'll open these items to the public comment after all have been given. Um, so we got board report. Who would like to lead off? Director Stolo? I think you're okay. Director Saunders? I submitted the board report. Uh, the significant stuff from the Regional Water Authority is the uh, Contract with a uh, legal water authority and DWR is now finalized. So uh, as they finish their projects, they can uh, send them in for reimbursement. And what this means is that uh, all of the projects for the Sacramento Regional Water Basin for groundwater will be uh, at least 55 million of it will be reimbursed. And in cooperation, we're part of the Upper American River part of this. So when we are dealing with uh, VA agreements, anything we do in terms of replenishing their groundwater or being being able to get credits, that's uh, where we come into play. So hopefully uh, this is part one and part two, when we deal with our voluntary agreements, hopefully we'll have reimbursement for replenishment as well. Uh, the aqua stuff was there. I attended the vice president candidates, had some meetings. We have a uh, webinar which is coming up in uh, September and I believe um, Nicholas is going to be one of the panelists on that one and uh, we will also have a program at uh, Aqua where uh, Adam is going to be one of our panel speakers so putting everybody to work <laughs> so it's not just me and uh, we had our community outreach and our uh, staff and the directors were there for national night out and I'm sure they have more pictures on it as well and there's a picture there with Lori Paul. And that's it for my board question. Thank you, Director Saunders. Director Thornwood. I was also at National Night Out. I got a little bit miffed. Um, we're sitting in the booth, and there was Nicholas, and there was uh, Director Saunders, and Director Seaman, and myself, and my wife Charlene. And they go on the, the Chamber of Commerce was doing a raffle where you buy the raffle tickets, you put them in the bag of the prizes you want. So we're sitting there finally going to call the raffle winners and they call Nick. He goes up and picks up his prize. Then they call Donna. She gets up and goes and gets her prize. Really? Then they call Saunders. He gets up and goes and gets his prize. Raffle was over. So Charlene and I are sitting in the booth by ourselves. We bought more tickets than any of them did. We got nothing. The community got zipped. Did anybody have a clean airplane? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. Hey, we had a good time. Turner had a blast. <laughs> yeah, she loved it. Yeah. And I will just give, I'll, I'll let the cat out of the bag. Our, our uh, The water drip is uh, Mr. Thornbrough's oh, lovely. Drop. She's not going for the drip. Mr. Drip drop. <laughs> drip drop. <laughs> drip drop. <laughs> drip drop uh, is uh, Mr. Thornbrough's lovely wife, Charlene, and she is absolutely the most fantastic <laughs> mascot we could ever have. Right on. And she's the right size for this. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you don't want to live with the beer. Yeah. Well, what's funny is that in the suit, she couldn't see the little kids coming up. And then in the suit, you know, the eyes are like way apart. And so she can only look through one eye. And so I got a picture of her talking to this little girl with a head all twisted and just this one eye. Just looking at her. <laughs> it was pretty funny. But anyway, yeah, she, she loves that stuff. She, she looked Gumby every year at Halloween. So. <laughs> it's good, man. Yeah, she, she had a good time. Yeah. Even though she didn't win anything. No. <laughs> Director Simmons? Um, So we had Irrigation Committee, Policy Committee, National Night Out, and then um, I was doing some animal evac training uh, out of county and met uh, Kevin Kiley and was able to walk up to him and thank him for all his support. Uh, and even in his uh, email that he sends out to his constituents, there's a picture of him and me <laughs> in his newsletter. <laughs> so, 
I was PRing it. And Darren, thank you. Uh, all I have to report is I'll be attending the uh, August 28th to 31st, uh, 2023 CSDA annual conference and training, I believe with Nicholas. Yeah, I'll be in, I'll be in uh, Monterey with you as well. Okay. And that's all I have to report. Um, with that, legislative liaisons report. Oh, was there a public comment? No, we're at the, the, the end of everything. All the reports. Okay. There is public comment. It's just at, at the, the end, end of everything. All right. Well, not just each step. Okay. I would say not the end of everything. Just we'll get through the reports. There'll be public comment. Then there'll be board discussion. So in the middle of everything. But yeah, let's get to the report. Okay. Yeah. So the legislative report I sent out. Uh, so color coded. Uh, yellow means it's held in committee but is suspended. So suspended means it's a two year bill. So it will come up at next year's. Uh, it's not dead, but it's it may come up next year. So we see two of the three water rights were um, suspended. The third one is still active and we'll go to the appropriations uh, committee. And the significance of that is that bill for the water rights that we oppose, the author is the chair of the appropriations committee. So just to give you some insight on how well that will probably go. So that probably is going to pass without significant um, lobbying and work on our part or at least trying to get some things amended so the bills have been being amended as we go through but it's not looking good the blue ones are held in committee and not suspended yet so they may not be dead and everything else is moving forward so that's it if anybody had any comments on any of the yeah, the, the one water bill that is moving forward has been significantly amended. Water rights bill has been significantly yes. amended and does not pose the same risk that it did before to the water rights system. It's very much neutered down from where it used to be. Mm -hmm. And another one, uh, AB 676, the one that defines uh, what domestic use is, that bill was amended to have no regulatory impact. So that one, uh, we can be neutral on that one as well. The one AB 1572, that one was amended so that agency doesn't have to do enforcement on that. So we don't have to be out checking people's uh, non-functional turf watering. So we can be neutral on that one as well. So a lot of the bills have been amended favorably. That's about it. Thank you. Operation manager's report. Yeah, thank you. So our production is starting to uh, ramp up for, for July. It's kind of typical this time of year, you know, for the start of your game. So seeing that go up a little bit higher than last year. So we will work on uh, communicating the best, best use water use practices to stay within our goals. Um, it's the same. This last month, you know, a sheet of kind of a summary table of different work done throughout the system, um, kind of locations and just some photo documentation of some different work. You know, a lot of a lot of brush brush clearing, a lot of maintaining the ditch to make sure it's still falling in different parts of the district. I feel like in the last you know few weeks we've really made a lot of ground and caught up to you know the growth. Um, so I think we're not hearing as many calls from customers, so I think that that's good. Um, did a big meter installation um, down the pool area. One of the, one of the last AMR we kind of work some work to be done before we could do that. So we got that done this month. Just a few different water breaks. Tried to break down. These are just kind of example. Um, each picture kind of ties to one project is, you know, the effort it goes into complete each of these, each of these tasks. Um, quick list of the CIP projects. Well, obviously we're starting the year here, so I'm starting, starting those off. Um, so the priority get going first is the tank mining project. And getting back on the program with that, we take a couple years off, so we're gonna start that again. So we're going to deal with replacement. Should have something the next couple board meetings to, to bring back to the board with kind of the documents. 
Other master meters still waiting for those to arrive. We heard mid August. I don't have a current update. Uh, so, pump station, we're still different pump stations going through and repairing where we, where we can to make sure they're operating properly. We're having a couple pump issues, a couple starter issues that we're, we're mitigating them as we go through. Um, water system reliability study, we're really close to getting uh, that pretty much complete. Um, did some field work where the engineer came out and looked at some mains, you know, dug up locations, looked at them, had some more discussions between your know, distribution staff that's been here for an extended period of time, give some insight to that. Uh, we kind of got one final step um, to really um, put together our PRVs and the uh, not location, but you know, last work that was done last month to replace we're about finishing that about in the next couple of weeks. And we'll be able to get going on that final report for, for the district. Um just general things, you know, getting the capital improvement projects going, finalize the AMR grant funding report, and I'm talking about that, but I think if I finalize that, it would be the last of it. Um doing some tree removal from along the upper canal, which we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, continue to work on the canal line water smart grant. We're in the process of doing environmental review for that right now. Um, you know, general customer service, which you know, daily, daily thing. Um, so the next section is talking about mosquito fire erosion control planning. So I kind of took some photos of the upper canal, um, starting from you know, structure two throughout to give a overview of what what our values are moving forward. Um, Every time we go up there, it looks it looks really different, and the logging operations there are significant. So, trying to come up with a plan how to do this, how the best plan of attack. Um, we think we have it. You know, we worked with our with Castle engineers went back up there after the the recent after the fire. They got back up this spring, so we have come up with a plan. We know where we need straw logs. We know where we need silt fencing. So we're going to start working on that, um, coordinating with the landowners. Um, we're going to need, you know, road repair. I think we'll probably come back to the board with some kind of estimate and you know, a funding option because we're coordinating with the landowners that are up there, but, you know, they're not going to do all of it. So we're going to have to, you know, bear some responsibility there, I believe. Um, we're, we're going to work on that um, because as of right now, you know, once we hit a rain, we're not going to really get up there, and that's going to that's going to be not good. We we need to have access. We need to maintain access up there. Otherwise, um, yeah, I don't even know. If I, <laughs> we have a big rain, I mean, we could have so much mud up there. So we, I mean, we're talking, you know, grading the road and adding gravel to it, so we can have access during rain events. And I, I would just add to that that last year, after the fire and during the big beginning rains we were trying to clear and get things maintained that burned and were in big draws and large erosion areas and we just couldn't get there we had to actually rent bulldozers and and use equipment that we don't have to get access to finish work and make sure the district's supplies were safe so this is what adam is proposing is hopefully going to alleviate having to do that in the future. And would that be reimbursable through the... We think so, okay. yeah. So it, it would all be as a result of the, the fire damage. So yes, yeah. our thoughts is it would be reimbursable. Okay. And I, I'm worried this year with Dozer won't even do it. You know, it's going to be so bad. It's, it's going to be just... The, the amount of silt and runoff that's going to happen is... I mean, if we don't do something now... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, we're still going to see, I don't think we're going to be able to mitigate every erosion. It's just too much. Um, but I think we could maintain the, have, maintain the roads, work with the landowners up there to get the roads navigable during rain events, um, which will help out a lot. And then it'll we'll, we'll give us access to address those issues when we do have those erosions. Because there's just too much material out there to stop everything. It's... I mean, this is slope. You see from the pictures, it doesn't really do it justice. I mean, you're talking huge areas that are not don't have any vegetation on it now and have all been disturbed by logging operations. And I'll just I'll just say one thing real quick. I don't mean to cut you off. Some of the stuff that we budgeted for has already come in a little lower costs, i.e., um, the VFD replacement at um, Walton treatment plant is came in about ten thousand dollars less. 
So there is money available in the budget to cover these costs. So we're not just trying to throw money that we don't have into these problems. We're trying to take money that we are saving through other areas and, and move it here and then hopefully get reimbursed on the back. How many acres burned up there in within? Do we know how many acres within our system that burned up there? I know on top of my head, but I could, I could definitely get that number. Well, it was ballpark. I mean, that, that was. You that know, would explain how much area you're talking about. Yeah, you know, you well, know, the station is about five to six miles, and you're and you're talking. You're probably talking about ten to fifteen thousand acres. The area. The total acreage for the fire was seventy six, and we have maps, so we can we can do some calculations to make sure we have the actual number. But I would say it's it's at least fifteen. Okay. Well, it kind of puts it in perspective as to how big that area. Big, yeah, you know, we're looking at, and it's pretty big. And, and a lot of the <clears throat> issues we're seeing is some of the areas were fire intense, and then some of the areas were fire at not so as intense, and it changes the soils based on the heat of the fire, and so that's what we're fighting right now is is the the soils are like fluff and soft, and they just want to keep moving, and you know, we're seeing the sloughing, we're seeing movement, we're seeing everything, even without you know a lot of moisture in the air or in the, you know coming from the air. We're seeing movement. Would that be would there be an uh, engineer involved? Yes. And then the last stage is the monthly water demand assessment. Sure, you know, some we're we are using more water, which is expected. Um, but shows that usage over time. It's it's more important. And I'll just add a little bit to the fire report that Adam discussed. I was going to say this in my general manager report, but I can say it now. We went yesterday and did a tour with some legislative staff and um, some the resource National Resource Conservancy, and we kind of went through some of those mosquito areas and and uh, also you know where it touches the King Fire. So we're we're looking at all of the different things that are coming about and. We are trying to partner. So um, SPI is a major landowner up there and a lot of our ditches go through their land. They're probably one of our major partners in this. And uh, we reached out to them to hopefully partner on some of this, um, not only fire um, mitigation, but also you know working with the roads and how to make it access to the area so that we don't have uh, an issue like last year where we couldn't just fill it in there. Water Resources Manager's Report, please. So we're on 118 annual or routine inspections. We've got uh, five escrows. Out of one of those, we got a new pump tank installed. We had our no spill cert. And then we have the second zone report submitted August 1st. Um, so the biggest thing was we had quite a bit of trees removed from the CDS field. We've got it's fenced, but it's real poorly fenced and it's very old. And then over the years, you know, just it's kind of falling apart. So we had, uh, I'd say like 20 something trees taken out so that we can prepare to put up a new fence. It's along one of the um, equestrian easements for ALT. So we're really just trying to get that fence repaired so that we don't have some, some stragglers kind of go into our leach fields there. Um, we had zero percent rainfall, which is not that exciting to see, but it is common. Um, no real changes on the temperature or precipitation outlook, but I did find some interesting information about the next, like, winter rainfalls that are coming with it being that switch from the, what has it been, Nino to Nino. Um, it's supposed to be worse than the winter of 2015 and 16, which I didn't remember that far back. So I looked it up and I found a rain station that's it's a little bit north of us, but it was the closest I could kind of come up with. And they got 68.78 inches of rainfall that year. And then if you go down to my rain chart here, we've got 39. So we could be looking at quite a bit of rain in November and December, which kind of plays into Adam's siltation issues. So hopefully we can get everything kind of buttoned up for that. Can you mention about snow? I don't know. Um, it was just a rainfall thing off the like California state website that I found it on. 
but I can look into it for next month. Try and find the snow levels. Yeah, I'm curious to know that. Yeah, I didn't really think about it because just my rainfall chart is kind of one track line, but I'll I'll do that for next time. I think we can add a, a potential snow outlook because that's important to know. Right. Is there any update on the? Can I answer a question? I'm already talking. Is there any update right. on the wastewater discharge permit? The, um. Oh. The update is we gathered a lot of documentation for our engineer who is now reviewing that. Um, we've been in contact with the county. I've been in contact with both county staff and county supervisor to discuss what it is that they're looking for from us. Um, and they sent us a list of documents that they wanted to review and wanted us to review. So uh, Bennett Engineering is based, uh, has those documents and they're reviewing those. So the update right now is there is no update, but we are still working very hard on it. Um, on that fence, is that a GPED fence or is that supposed to be like a Auburn Lake Trail slash GPED fence where we should be having them put out some money towards it also? I don't know. Do you know? I mean, I know we bite it just because, but is that one where we can get money from Auburn Lake Trail to help repair that fence because it's right to keep their folks out of it? We can reach out. Yeah. We'll take a look at it. The, the horse trail. Yeah, so it's in an easement. We'd want to maintain the fence to keep them out of our property. You know, if it was like a boundary fence, that would be a, a shared. I'd have to see exactly where it's at, though. Yeah. We'll, we'll take a look at it this week. And we'll, we'll yeah, so we're not just taking on expenses we don't need to or the whole thing. Thank you. I could do is at ALT and if the water does here so You get them both <laughs> Um, we have the general manager's report. <laughs> Thank you. I'm um, going to just go briefly through what we have here. Um, been uh, meeting with the, the FEMA officials regarding the flooding and the fire. Um, did meet with some union officials from both Local 1 and uh, Local 39. I met with Local 1 here in person. Local 39, um, Zoom call. Um, <laughs> Again, as was previously stated at the last comment from Director Saunders, uh, did meet with Board Supervisor Parlin regarding the WDR to ensure that we were working to be on the same page. Um, have been doing a lot of work with VA, um, the Reservoir Reoperators Group, and also with RWA uh, VA uh, Ad Hoc Committee, which I was placed upon. Uh, hosted coffee with the GM at uh, Cool Coffee and Crumbs. Sorry, I had to think of the name. Uh, a few, uh, few, few members of the public came. I got to spend some time with uh, some of our finance committee members. Um, also got to spend some time with some of our board members, so that was good. Um, let's see. Also held um, tacos with the GM at Red Roosters. Um, that was a good time. Less uh, public came, but still got to uh, interact with some of the people from the community. Uh, the tacos were excellent. The yeah. tacos were excellent. Yeah. And the board. <laughs> and the board was even better. Uh, <laughs> I did attend National Night Out on uh, August 1st. So that was a great event to uh, just make awareness to uh, children and uh, the community that were here, we gave out uh, some water conservation uh, pamphlets. We also had uh, the drip drop out there, drip. which uh, well, I, it's, she didn't want to be called the drip. So we're, 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 we're going we're gonna to name it. We're going to send her to the school and we're going to name the drip drop, whatever it's going to be end up being. Um, so we're going to have the kids name it. Uh, but anyway, National Night Out was great. Uh, lots of people attended. We got uh, great exposure. You know, the, the community got to see us there. Uh, gave out Otter Pops to the kids, so that was fun. You know, anytime you see a kid running around hopped up on sugar, it's a good day. <laughs> it livens up the place. It does liven up the place. Um, 
So the good news updates, I kind of already went over that. I will quickly go over it. Um, if anybody has any questions about the grant we received, it is uh, called the Fire Safe on the Divide. The exact number is 1.192, uh, 222, $1, 192,220 dollars. Sorry, I tried to do a, a little bit faster than I should have done. I couldn't figure out how to end that. So anyway, that's fantastic. Um, it's it's a super big deal for the district. We've gone for this grant before in the past and have not been able to secure it. So again, many thanks to Morgan and her team. Adam was a huge integral part in helping Morgan put all that together. Mm -hmm. um, what this will allow us to do is to purchase some equipment. So. Uh, Part of the grant allows us to buy a new excavator, um, potentially a skid steer, some masticating heads. I'm also going to try to roll in a dump truck as part of that program as well, even though it's part of our CIP. If we can get um, Cal Fire in this grant to pay for that, then I think it'd be better. The rest of the funds will go towards hiring a forester and um, doing land clearing and building fire breaks, utilizing our infrastructure. So the goal is to take some of our canals, some of our, our infrastructure and use them to build a big fire break and to also not only protect our infrastructure, but to protect the whole divide community. So this is a big one. Um, so again, thank you to uh, Morgan for that. Um, I didn't get to uh, I'll say this at the last board meeting, or maybe I did, but I did say at the finance committee, we received a, a $1,000 grant from uh, JPIA, Aqua JPIA for a wellness grant, and we're going to use it to put in some uh, water bottle fillers for the employees. Uh, the goal, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to do both, but the goal is to put one here and put one down at the uh, sweet water treatment plant to uh, let guys come in, make sure they're drinking clean water, make sure they're staying safe out in the field. Uh, federal appropriation. So, um, Ms. Donna Seaman got to meet with our, our illustrious Congressman Kevin Kiley. Uh, he has placed us in the queue for one of his appropriations of 1.25 million. We've been working with um, an engineering firm on the potential size of a water tank down at Sweetwater. And, um, Adam and I have kind of settled on, we probably don't need the 2, millions, that two million gallons that we originally thought because the, the tank we're pumping to is only a half a million. So if we had about a million, then we'd probably be really good. So um, we can, cover most of the costs of this tank project with the federal appropriation uh, and very little coming out of the pocket from the district to do this. So that's the goal is to, to spend the little, the least amount of, of district funds on this project as possible. Did you have a question? What's the size of the tank that's there now? So there is no tank there right now. Basically the uh, Angel Camp tank is a half million. And so we pump directly from the treatment plant to Angel Camp. Uh, the goal is to put a tank in the middle so that we can fill that tank with water and we can hold water there so we can take the tank, the treatment plant, and run it less or have less um, uh, pumping costs as water is moving through the treatment plant. So uh, basically give us a bit more of a buffer in case we ever have an issue with that treatment plant. We'd have a, a million gallons of water that we could, we could rely on. Right, but at the last time when the plant went down, which was a couple of years ago, um, one of the reasons why I was very vocal about this getting this bigger tank was because at the time that it went down, we only had like what, a day's worth of water. If that, we can I mean we can have hours. Uh, so if it's if it's high flow, I mean we don't have, we can have hours. Right, that's, exactly, and so that was the main so in my mind and, and <clears throat> that main purpose. Uh, putting in this tank mm -hmm. was to alleviate that problem. So we'd be putting in twice as much as, as is available right now. So we'd still be putting in a million where right now we only have 500,000 available. And so that's, that's the, we're basically doubling uh, what we have available now. And that's the goal is to get, at least get more. The, the, another issue we're facing is footprint. The area where we have to put this tank uh -huh. um, is, is not large. And so the diameter uh, of the tank that we could put in, it would have to be quite a tall tank and uh, visually not always appealing. And we've, we've already dealt with several visually appealing issues at this facility. I think we need to figure out a way to make it a lot more than a million. If we're gonna spend this kind of money on it, I think it needs to be, because if we only have a few hours is what we got there now, we're doubling that. 
We're not getting it. Yeah, we're not even getting a date. Up to I, the day, yeah. I think what I can do or what we can do as staff is put together a proposal for different sizes mm -hmm. and how much the district would, would cost the district. Mm -hmm. And uh, then we can, it's ultimately your decision. It would it'll have, to have to come to you to be approved because it's going to be a construction contract anyway. But we can have a variety of different sizes and you as the board can choose which size you'd like to go with. Along with the cost? Yeah, along, oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, yeah it's, I mean, you got installation costs as it is and, and to increase the size of the tank is going to be less than if you come back later to try to put in another tank. Sure, I think if I can recall, um, we looked at almost 2 million, it was like 1.875 million was approximately 175, 100, 1 million 750,000. So another 750,000 gets you another million basically. So it, it's not exponential, it's, it, you get- It's like two thirds, for another third, you could get. I uh, I hate to use percentages because it's it's gonna. I could give you all the numbers when we do the analysis. All right. Well, I think I think what I would be looking at is running the calculations. Go back and look at the water usage of various times during the year, mm -hmm. and look at how much water do we need to have stored there to uh, have a like a two day shutdown of the plant. Something like that. You know, we, I we don't need know to if we can at, cover two days, but yeah, we, we, well, we, we need to cover a day. We need we need to set a target as to what the minimum amount sure. we we need to cover. Okay, I think we can do that. Yeah, that's that's what I would be looking at. Okay, all right. Uh, oh, did you have a question? Down, sorry. No, you have a flag here. Oh no, you're good. I, I apologize. Oh, yeah, we'll flag we'll raise your flag hand flag. higher. Anyway, also you're gonna have to look at uh, number one. Uh, what the environmental aspects are of it, of whether or not you can legally, environmentally go a bigger size, because you've got multiple uh, triggers that will cost more money. So that yeah. so that we shouldn't have many environmental issues with this area since it's already disturbed, it's already our land, and it's already we we had something there previously. So yeah. you're going to have a nick deck on this most likely. Um, because of where we're locating the tank. We're not locating, we're not doing any earth moving. You know, the only earth moving we would do doing is to build the foundation. And so there's already a previous foundation in that area. View, you were talking view. Um, and, and view That's is- a big flag. It, it's a flag, but I don't think it's as big a flag as you think it's a, the person, it's a customer we've been dealing with there. So I don't think um, it's gonna be as unsightly a view as it would be to most. Paint a mural on it. <laughs> you can do that. <laughs> Problem solved. All right, one more count. I didn't find it. I didn't yeah. One more comment to support Director Thornborough. Uh, it should be data driven, the requirement for the size of the tank, and the need should be based on sure. what you know, we determine as the minimum based on the temperatures and uses during that time of year, not to hopefully get it at or under what the grant would be to be a zero cost, you know? Well, that's, yes, and we can also offset the other district costs with state grants. And so we're still working on that. So that, um, my goal is to not spend any local money to build this project and kind uh, of do everything I can to make that happen. Um, really quickly, just to finish up, uh, we did hold a ledge visit yesterday with uh, Kylie's office, LaMalta's office, and uh, Diane Feinstein's office. Uh, there was also the Nature Conservancy. Uh, SPI was there. Um, the County of Placer was there. And PCWA was a, a gracious host, and they actually used our facility. Um, they put all, the, all of it together. So, you know, huge shout out to PCWA for considering us and allowing us to be a part of this tour and this uh, visit, but um, we also helped host the, the visit here in the office. And then we, we all caravaned out uh, from here and made a stop at Stumpy so we could look at, um, you know, the district's water supply and how that is affected by fire and the mitigation efforts after the fire. Uh, <clears throat> again, uh, as stated by, uh, President McDonald will be attending the CSDA conference in Monterey on the 28th and the 31st. Um, I do have a couple of other items that I would like to um, jump into that are um, 
we are going to start advertising for irrigation and finance committee vacancies now that we have Mr. Mead removed from the committee on the irrigation side and the finance committee is still um, three members short. So we're going to again continue um, advertising for those vacancies. Um, the um, aqua conference will be upcoming at the end of November. So I believe uh, as if Adam is speaking, Adam and myself will be attending from the staff. We will need to discuss which board members will be attending. So as previously stated, I'd like to have no more than two board members there just to not have any Brown Act issues while we're uh, traveling around. So I'll- uh, well, we don't know what the place for it's the conference. I'm sorry? It doesn't- I, I, I yeah. know, but it's, it's, it's the impropriety of it still could be could seen there. I just, it's easier to uh, not put us into those situations than it is to have those situations. So uh, that is something that we can discuss um, moving forward. We do have until next meeting to make that decision. So um, I will reach out to all five of the members and see who would like to go. Um, <clears throat> we do have um, a quick presentation on the investments from um, Robert Michalik. Robert, Robert, are you with us? David's here. here. Sorry, <laughs> it's not connecting. Were you gonna? Anything? Were you gonna have it on your end, Nicholas, or did you want us to share? Uh, we're sharing it right now, so you can go ahead and um, start uh, your presentation. It should be popping up on the screen momentarily. There we go. Excellent. Thank you, Nicholas. We appreciate it. And uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for your time. We just wanted to jump right in. As Nicholas mentioned, this will be a quick presentation to go over uh, the investment results uh, over the last month that we're able to achieve uh, for the district. Next slide. So this, this back one. Back, back to. Same presentation for finance. Yeah. So slide number two shows the portfolio details. That'll provide you all of the specific information of every investment that was uh, purchased uh, over the last month. It does include some investments that are going to settle after uh, August. So you do see uh, one on there for the 17th, uh, which was a CD. Um, everything else on the screen has been settled. And so we're able to get a very nice yield to maturity for the portfolio for the district of 4.59%, quite a bit above what we originally proposed to the district. Obviously, as interest rates rise and as we're able to get spreads on the CDs that we were able to purchase, uh, we were able to get a favorable outcome for the district. Next slide. So this is pretty much an ideal distribution um, over the five-year time horizon that the government code allows. Um, really, we want to see numbers around 20% uh, for each of those years. Some of them, it's just timing of the specific month. They'll be shifting as the quarterly reports are completed for the district, but um, it's a very nice spread. And this doesn't include the money that's going to be set aside for um, class and checking account. So this is just the U.S. Bank managed portfolio. Next slide, please. This is an interest revenue projection. So basically, we calculated every single investment that was purchased. Um, so these are accurate numbers, but obviously for anything that's maturing during the fiscal year, whether that money is reinvested or not is a future decision. Um, but ultimately, you're going to be able to achieve uh, the revenues projected on the screen. Um, very nice to see the district be able to uh, get uh, almost $450,000 in interest revenue projected for the 12 month period ending July 31. Um, with that, I think the, that's the last slide on the presentation. Love to answer any questions the board has. Let's 
So this was the same presentation that was given at finance, um, and then we just wanted to make sure that the board was made aware. But go ahead, please. Yeah, I have a question for you. Um, there's nine million was invested, in my understanding. It's a uh, seven and a half million done in CDs and one and a half million done in California class, it's called. Okay. And California class is our operating reserve. So instead of operating um, our uh, with our savings account, we are utilizing California class, which is also a liquid account, mm -hmm. um, same day of cash availability. And so we can have money in there and still be earning almost uh, five and a half percent in California class. Okay. So that's going to be our operating. So this is more long term. Yeah, These are the long term. Long -term, yeah. term yeah. So there's a, there's a short term mix that's about six to nine months that if we have an emergency, we can still pull, you know, six to nine months worth of, of funds. But the long term, you know, this goes out to 2028. I believe, David, am I correct? Am I 2028? Yes, sir. So so that is the long term nature of this, yes. Okay. Due to the inverted yield curve and the higher shorter term interest, we'll be able to not sacrifice yield for liquidity. So we're in a sweet spot. And it's laddered appropriately. Mm -hmm. Yes, we laddered it with, we're going to take all comments at the very end, if you don't mind. Um, it's, it is laddered and it is um, utilizing um, set amounts that will release um, as cash is available. None of these are going to be automatically reinvested. We will look at the, the, the market. We will determine what is the correct uh, uh, vehicle at that point. So as one of these becomes you know, into maturity, say the six months one comes into maturity, we, we will make a decision as staff, do we keep going with this investment? Do we change it to something else? Um, and then you know, as things in 2028 become available, you know, obviously at that time, the interest rates may change considerably and we may end up pulling some of this back from where we're at now and reassessing where these investments go in the future. Passive investments with active management. I think um, since we have um, somebody online, if there was a question from the public, we can add, uh, take a question from the public, um, and then we're gonna let Mr. Bilby um, okay uh, kick sign off. Mr. Dowd, go ahead, please. Yeah, Stephen Dowd. Um, Bill, you said uh, it'd be four hundred fifty thousand dollars at the end of January or July thirty first of next year, correct? It's a uh, that's our projection for interest rate based on the portfolio. Oh, well, uh, will that money be able to, uh, will that be liquid? That money be able to be that, used? That money will be fully liquid and back into the plan. The board will decide on how to allocate that money budgetarily as time goes on. But yes, that money will be fully liquid. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you, David. Thank you, Robert. We appreciate you guys coming in. We'll uh, let you guys get back to your uh, your regular schedule program. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Take care. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, really quick before you turn it over to public comment, I meant to mention this during my report, and I'll, I'll just apologize. Um, because we're a member of the chamber, I just wanted to point out that there is a chamber mixer this evening. If anybody would like to go, it's right down the street here at the Art of the Divide. I believe it's six to eight. And that's all of my report. I just had one thing to add that I so it was an annual report, and that was uh, we did apply for the Atla Huel Hauser Excellence in Communication Award for the work we did as the district for uh, getting the water reduction done with the water revenue and all of the pamphlets and the uh, signs and banners and drip drop or whatever it's going to be called. So that's pretty, <laughs> yeah. Thank you for that. Okay. I will now open the public comment section. Is there any public comment on any of the items in the reporting? Go ahead. Yeah, Sharuda operation, operations. Yeah, everything. everything from information. Uh, Sharuda, go ahead. Um, what does the VA stand for in, the, in your report? Voluntary agreements. So that's okay. the agreements for the Delta. I thought it was some department. It's actually a VSA, but most people have just shortened it to VA. What's the S stand for? Service? Mm -hmm. Well, you walked into that. 
Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'll have to get back to you. It's in our water transfer. Look in the water transfer policy that the acronym is in. Any more, sir? Mm -hmm. Mr. Downs? Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, Adam. Um, I I think I mentioned this, I don't know if it was a month ago or two weeks ago, but there's uh, two cedar trees going out of town, going towards Auburn, Greenwood, right alongside the ditch that we just had lined a couple of years ago, and they both died. And they're right there next to the ditch. I mean, and if they fall over, they're dead. If they fall over, they're going to rip that ditch out. Have, has anybody thought about uh, cutting them things down? You need to do it. Because if they fall over, bye bye ditch. Did you noted? We'll, yeah. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. yeah. We'll look into that. Look at this. Yeah, I'll just address the we will definitely look at the trees and determine if it's if there's something we need to do. We also we have our engineers out if we need to. To, to the negative termination. Unfortunately, if they're not on our property, we may not have rights to cut them down. Right. Still, we'll make it our right. But then it could be an easy. Yeah. yeah, any further public comment? No. We'll, now we'll close the public comment portion of this section. Um, uh, anything that the staff would like to address? Board comments, questions? No. no. Okay. Moving on. Committees. Irrigation committee report. We will receive all these committee reports and we'll open these items to the public comments after all have been given. Irrigation committee. Ray Griffiths. Would you like to give an announcement about the irrigation committee? You're welcome to or not. No. I no, I no, you're fine. I'm He's going to. No. I can just update that we did semi finalize the irrigation ordinance. However, uh, we did input a few more things on the staff level, so it will be moving back to the irrigation committee to be re, uh, re approved uh, at the irrigation committee before it comes back to the board. I see your thunder. You sure? No, you didn't steal my sure? thunder. Oh, I'm saying is that. <laughs> Uh, the committee worked really well at the at the last meeting, and they um, they went through it all um, and pretty much beat up as much as they could, and it was ready to go uh, to the board until staff decided they had input. Yeah. Now it's going to come back to us, you guys. And the input that the staff had was not um, significant. There was just a few things that had happened over the years that we wanted to ensure was included in there as well, and. It, it, it mostly has to do with outages and, uh, um, you know, the potential for uh, priority levels. And so you'll, the, the irrigation committee will see it as they come back. And we and we'll had a legal it. opinion we requested. We did have, a, we, we did get a legal opinion. Next meeting date is August 17th. Thank you. Uh, Finance committee, Andy Fisher. So Andy is not in attendance. You are, are welcome where I would be happy to give an update. Maybe you could cover for I might have missed. Sure. Uh, again, we had the uh, gentleman give the report he just gave to us yes. in more depth to the finance committee. And um, we then, they, the finance committee discussed the possibility of, or the recommendation of moving reserve fund from 180 days to 120 days to, to the board mm -hmm. and then we also uh awarded chairman miller uh a proclamation and a, a plaque for his service as chairman over the years and uh, it was a nice uh, little ceremony we thought and um not sure if there's anything else, Director. Those were the major checklists. We did also um, receive the initial audit, which we will we'll discuss um, at, in more detail at an item here. Uh, unfortunately, we still don't have the final. We do have a draft. It is it is a strong draft. We are waiting on one more piece to the puzzle, which is being developed by our uh, CPA firm and in conjunction with Jessica Buckle, our office manager. So I'm assured that we will have it. Final, final at the next board meeting. 
the next Pardon? As I recall, it was a recommendation of the finance committee to move the reserves from 182 to 120. So we're going to discuss this later on. If you want to, you can discuss it now, or we can just discuss it. It's an item as well. That's from the finance. Committee. Yeah, I do have a recommendation from the finance okay. committee. Okay. And the next meeting date is scheduled for August 24th. And that is a, a special meeting, just so you're all aware. Um, the regular scheduled meeting is August 31st. Unfortunately, with some of the staff and board members out of town that day, uh, we did move that forward one week. Item 7C, Ad Hoc Committee for Policy Manual. That would be uh, Director Saunders or Seaman to comment. So most of the items are approved on consent calendar. They are sexual harassment prevention and abuse uh, conduct was on the consent calendar that passed along with the social media policy, which was updated. Uh, the CEQA policy went to legal, so it's come back. So that'll be re-reviewed by our policy committee. The next ones we will be looking at will be uh, asset management, uh, probably the uh, sexual harassment for the board of directors, and the personnel manual. We also received a legal review back from the personnel manual. So we're doing some union uh, checking on that, and then that should be coming to the policy committee as well. And then uh, we also plan to bring a six month update and a review of the going forward, how to uh, keep the policies updated and going from resolutions to policy and that will have that uh, kind of guideline to start going forward. Mm -hmm. okay. Anything else? Yeah, but we need to start that last one at the policy committee. The six yeah. month, yes, we have. It's on. It's a standing item that we have. It's just an update on what we've done, and then what we plan to do with more. But it's been on there. We just haven't really talked about it as much since the, since we first started meeting. Next scheduled meeting date is also on the seventeenth with the irrigation committee. Do you have a conflict? Or is this two different yeah, times? They, they meet at different times. Oh, one's at seven thirty. Eight. Seven thirty. And the other one's at two. Two. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Donna meets at 7 30, and then we all pop on at 8 afterwards. <laughs> they to set their alarms and coffee pot. <laughs> Item 7D, Grant Writing Committee. Uh, Director Saunders or Stovall would like to take that comment. A lot of that stuff was uh, in the report, and uh, Morgan was here. So, uh, also to congratulate uh, thank Morgan for her work with uh, the organization to help with uh, getting us this. Uh, the 1.2 million grant. We were trying to get it for Walton before, and now we get to do all 11 uh, water tanks and throughout the district from Georgetown to Cool. So that was pretty good. And also would like to thank um, Pilot Hill Grange number one for their letter of support to provide uh, an area of historical and cultural significance to the district. So mm -hmm. we were the first um, project that was funded in this. So it was done pretty well. So we were the first to receive funding. Uh, uh, it's 350 acres, I think, of treated area that we're going to be able to treat. Yep. Is it 350 or 3,500? I, I can't remember. I know it's three, five, and there's a zero, but I can't remember. There's one or two zeros, so I have to call this. <laughs> and then uh, we still continue the work with uh, for the reimbursements for FEMA, and uh, we have the road canal number five was done. And uh, we're working on Milton Lake dredging. So the next step is to get the bathymetric uh, study to see what it is versus as built to see what we may need to dredge. Uh, the other things that are still in the works, we did are still waiting for the hazard mitigation uh, program. Uh, the appropriation is moving through and now we're for Congress that went down from 1.5, it's now 1.25. And that's also what led to the smaller uh, million gallon to 987K tank to fit the um, footprint. I know initially it started at, I think it was two to three million gallon tank. So we'll guess that'll come to the board to see what's possible and what we can uh, do from in and out of match. Uh, we're still waiting for the uh, appropriations from the state. I don't know if we're still going to be on that. And uh, ones that are still out and pending are um, 
We're going to see if we can do anything for building any new water tanks, new reservoir, automated meter infrastructure, converting upcountry canals to prime band, lining the lower country canals. Those are the uh, things that if any of the other bigger grants come through, we can look forward to. And then if I can add, if you don't mind, um, we did receive a note from our federal advocate that uh, Biden and Harris administration makes nearly $200 million available for drought and climate resilient projects as part of the investing in America agenda. So um, I've already forwarded this to our uh, grant writer. It just came in this morning, so I apologize for not being part of the agenda. Though. Um, but we are going to start looking at this for um, potentially offsetting those costs um, for the tank um, and other um, potential uses for funds. And they were looking at uh, possible projects for um, Robert's um, grant thing that you brought up about the rural community resilience. Right? Oh, yes. what they said, the energy stuff, it we didn't really match. It does not fit with, because we're not a co-op, yeah. we would have to develop a co-op. And so we could, we could join a co-op, but at, at the current time, they don't see a feasible path forward to develop that co-op. Um, there is one other thing I wanted to add. Um, Can I answer a quick question on, on that resiliency? Yes. We have one tank, and I don't remember what neighborhood it's in, that's single by itself, that if you, if it, if you shut that and drain it, there's no way to get water to the houses. And they were talking, they were trying to figure out a way to have a, a, a redundant tank or some way to get that area where they still uh, get wider, uh, they get water provided to them. You'll have to give me an area. Sorry, I, can, I, think, I think that was the uh, let him talk. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you're talking, that's the, the, the angel camp. For, because yeah, angel camp thing. Before angel camp, there's a lot of customers in fact, it doesn't get. Yeah, because yeah, I think those dry, like, think those dry like, a lot of customers are out without water. But that, yeah, that tank is to have, at the at the treatment plant is to have that extra source in the environment. Yeah, because that's a, a bad area where if you got to go down and do the service on it, which it has never, my understanding, it does haven't had for years and years to get it coated or whatever. Um, there is no way to shut it down unless you shut everybody's water off for an extended period of time. We, yeah, that, that thing comes next year for coding. So. And then lastly, there's a $32 million available for a clean transportation and planning projects. So we will try to pursue some of this funding for the new um, rule for electric vehicles and um, uh, non emission vehicles. So that would be from the California Air Resource Board or CARB. Yeah. I believe there's a question over there. Yeah. You were about about thirty four thousand dollar grant coming from uh, Eldorado Water Agency for lining canals. Um, so I'm waiting for that to pop up on the agenda. But yes, we've talked to them about um, paying for environmental costs. For... Okay, then I will uh, I will uh, do my best to be there. Are you expecting a check? Is it? No, I, I just would like to give my support and thank them in person. I think it's important to build relationships. And lastly, as uh, Morgan stated in the comments about um, partnering with her um, or the organization, uh, Forest Resource Collaborative, so uh, my uh, recommendation from the grant committee as well for the board is that we uh, have this on our next agenda item. Yeah, so we will come back with a resolution of support for this grant um, to her agency. Or her organization, for our agency. So that's gone to the grants committee, yes. and then you're going to come to us. You guys have already made this decision at grants committee. Yes. Yes. The agenda for the next meeting. Yes, it was. We, her president, can show she that that had happened basically the day of. So she wanted to come in and present to you um, because we didn't have enough time to amend our agenda for this meeting. And um, so she's going to come back with a resolution for our next board meeting. And it'll be just you guys accepting uh, to be a partner. Again, no financial responsibility on our part, just to be a partner with Forest Resource Black. And it's time sensitive. So the grant is due the week after our September board meeting. Okay. And your next meeting date's October 4th? Yes, we meet um, the odd, the even month, the first Wednesday of every even month. Sounds good. Okay. 
I'll now open to the public for public comment. For any comments from the public? Okay. And no, I'll close the public comment period and there will be no further public comment allowed. Um, any board members uh, want to add to that or question any information you heard? No? Okay, then we'll move on to public action items. A. <coughs> Review and accept the annual financial report for the year ending June 30th, 2022. Possible action to accept the annual financial report for the year ending June 30th, 2022. So unfortunately the possible action will not be able to be taken today because this is not a final act report. So this will be a preliminary analysis of the audit. And I have a, a email note here from our CPA and I would just like to read this into the record. The draft audit in, is in its preliminary stage. It is still a draft. I have reviewed it and it looks like there are minimal changes, i.e. formatting. Should be finalized very soon. In its current state, the auditors have not proposed any major changes to the numbers. So what you see in the draft matches to the trial balances in the financial system. So what he's saying here is that everything is coming back looking normal. Everything is, um, you know, I would say good on um, the financial aspects. The things that we're waiting to finalize are what is known as an MDA. And I know everybody loves their acronyms and I don't remember what that is. It's called a management decision and analysis. And uh, what this uh, document is, is basically a document that states all of the work that was done, um, special projects, CIP projects, and then what is the outlook for the next, the next year moving forward. Um, so that is um, basically what the audit is saying. I was, I've been trying so hard to get this finalized and Jessica has been trying so hard to get this finalized. Um, it's, it's, we're like at the goal line. We're, we're trying to punch it in. It's not quite fourth and goal yet, but we're, we're running place. So Jessica, did you have anything to add? Cause I know you've still been in contact with Lewis and uh, LSL on uh, updating those MDAs and the rest of the document. The MDA is done. Uh, we're just entering in the compensated absences. So I think that is also done, and we're we've sent it off to the auditors, and so now we're just waiting here back. So I would open it up to any comments or questions on the numbers that are presented from the public. Now open the public. Did you get it? Public yeah, section. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Okay. Item fifteen. Mm -hmm. The post-employment benefits other than pensions. What exactly is that? And um, why is there, I mean, like it, there's like one point, almost six million, I guess, liability, but then we get $344,000 interest. I mean, is that the same as the retiree benefit? We went over this at the finance committee meeting and it was gonna be the same answer. But what, well, I didn't ask exactly what it was after I went and looked at it. You, this is, this is to do, to deal with the retiree benefits. Their health insurance? That is correct. Okay. I would say hold your question because when we do this, the auditor will be presenting this. So you can... Okay. Ensure that there you get your question answered. Correct. Okay. Close the public comment section. No more comments from the public will be allowed at this time. Board member comments, questions? Director Saunders? Yeah, one was is any of the unfunded liabilities put into the budget? Because I know some yes. is unfunded and that is we don't yes. have to pay it. So some of the things, if it's like four or five, six million. It's unfunded. It's good to know, but it's really not an offset directly. So they are amortizing this and how much we need to budget for moving forward. So that's what this chart tells us right here is how much to put into the budget for moving forward. And then we can use that number to help develop our unfunded liability. That's the thing we're going to try and do the Cal Trust for. Yeah, we uh, we would like to. <laughs> And then unfortunately, this is a number, but it will be on the uh, ending of the 
statement of revenues and expenses where it has admin and hydroelective that's over uh do you have a can you show me what it's like <laughs> oh it says draft daughter <laughs> no 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 i'm gonna make sure i'm looking at where he's looking because there's no page numbers yeah there's no page numbers so uh yeah so that was the uh the total for administrative and hydroelectric is 3.6 million so do we have details on that because so that's the uh that's that is a lot of this is um, asset costs, how much it is as an asset, not necessarily how much it is as revenue, how much the, the facility is worth. So that we don't get three three point seven million dollars as part of hydroelectric, but it is worth three hundred and five three point five million. But it's under operating expenses. It's not a revenue. It's an expense. Yeah. And it's more than twice than it was the year before. Yeah, these are under expenses. Yeah, so this was the thing. I will make a note of that. Yeah, so and expenses, make some clarification so, so that's what I want to make sure expenses yeah, I more than double there. And as for some reason, yeah. Do you see what you're talking about? Yeah, I found it. Okay. I found it. So, question. I will definitely look into that. That's a good I'm sure that there's an explanation, but I would like to know what it is first. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are you done? Are you done, Mark? Yeah, I'm done. Um, well, there's again no page number. It's uh, cash investments. And apparently, the number was too big. I don't know if you guys hack marks down there. And that doesn't look. Um, let's let's take cash and investments. Yeah, seven point two. Something doubled. Yeah, it got seven point two. Four four or somewhere else. Where are you getting this seven point two? It says it says note two on the top left and it's F mm -hmm. note two. Investment in state yeah. investment pool. Okay, so I'm on note two. And what section are you looking for? Well, in the middle of the page where it has the uh Restricted cash and investments. Well, looking right in the middle of the page, you see a whole bunch of hash marks. So, is there any hash marks? It's because it's still a draft. Those are some of the. Oh, I see what you're saying right here. So the number was too big. The, the number is too big. Yeah. That's usually what. So those, are four, those are the formatting areas she's talking about. Yeah. Um, in, so, uh, <laughs> this, this whole thing, let's do this whole thing, and it is quite a bit above my head. What I want to see is what's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have the auditor to do a presentation when this is final. So you will understand you can ask any questions and they'll do a presentation based on it. But my question is we have a draft here and it's supposedly the one they're going to do on is pretty close to the same as far as numbers you just said. Correct. So we're here to show the bottom line. How much surplus do we have or positive or negative? That's what I can find. Summary page. So then some of that's not calculated in here. If you notice on the pages, how there's still highlight areas, those are the areas where they're still putting in numbers. So the, the number, the bottom line number you're looking for, yeah. that's they haven't submitted that to us yet. They haven't given us that because they were still waiting on the MDNA and they're still waiting on the, oh, I'm sorry, what's the other thing? It's HR, it's an HR thing, um, uh, contributed. No, consolidated. consolidated. Compensated absences. And like, it has to do with the, like the vacation and sick time and everything that was paid out, what's still pending. So ultimately, the bottom line, what you're talking about is if PCWA were to come, if we got in trouble and the market crashed and someone stole our money and we couldn't pay off our debts, and another agency wanted to buy us out, how much are our assets worth? How much are we worth? How much cash do we have on hand? What you want to know is how much cash do we have on hand? What was our revenue from all of our debt that we owe from with all of our assets, everything else? Like, cause we owe $10 million for the sweet. Well, we did for the sweet water treatment plant. Mm -hmm. And then for the AMR project, that was another $6 million. So we have a lot of outstanding debt, but it's being paid over numerous years. Right? Yeah, I, so I, what I, you want is the bottom line. What is our cash on hand? What is what? What was our revenues for last year? And that's usually what determines what we can put into 
the CIP. Right, and that's what we've gotten every year for years. From LFL. Yes, they say like, mm -hmm. okay, well, we, we got in surplus $1.2 million or mm -hmm. something like that. Okay, are we going to put, how much are we putting in the CIP? How much are we putting into, into whatever? So you'll see in the reserve item that's on the agenda that has been kind of detailed. I asked that LSL does that for did that for us as our auditors. Now we have a new firm that's doing it. So I have requested something that looks similar to that. This is their template. So I have requested it. I will be getting something. LSL says if they don't detail it like that, they'll make one for us. Okay. Well, that's kind of what I'm looking to see. Yeah, and this is very rough. They didn't even want me to bring this to the board yet because they were like, this is very rough. Yeah, and, and, and I really rough. Well, I told them, and I had a discussion that basically we've been waiting too long. Look at that, and I and I said I wasn't coming back to the board meeting without something. Mm -hmm. So that, that that's why you have the rough. I okay. needed something to be presented to the board. Okay, and I don't think there's any action for us to take, and we just there is not unfortunately. We just move on to the next agenda. And I would also say that the next agenda item. We could discuss it. No, I don't, I, mean, I think, I don't mean the next agenda item. The next board meeting is what I meant to say. No, no, no I, I agree. And I'm, I'm just offering the next item. I don't think there's going to be any action we can take on that as well because we don't know yet. Right. Um, but we can definitely discuss it. So I'll uh, open it up okay. you know, for any other board comments on the audit. If you have any other comments that we can. I appreciate you giving us what you could. I know another thing changed with the Gasby requirements where they have to kind of add the liabilities from the pension and prefer in with the salaries. And for LAFCO, they subtracted that from the salaries and it showed that we paid our employees. 29,000 for the year. So we asked if they did want to actually give us the actual because we cannot present that to our agencies that say we have 600,000 extra and we're charging you 600,000 for cost. So yeah. to make sure that we have something that represents that we want the gas. Sure. Perhaps you can clarify something for me. Uh, you keep seeing LSL, but Mason Associates. So, so Mays and Associates is our auditor that the, we entered into a contract with them right, right before I came on board. Um, LSL is our CPA. And so the, our CPAs have been working with, L, with Mays to ensure that they have all the documentation they need. And then if there's any questions, they run them through LSL. So who's going to be doing the presentation? I'm going to say Mays is going to be here to oh, do it because okay. Mays is, is the actual auditor. Right. Okay. LSL, I would ask them to be here if there's any other questions. To translate. To translate. <laughs> There you go. I was just going to say that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Okay. Moving on to action item B, operating reserve transfer for fiscal year 21-22 and reserve fund analysis and possible action to determine whether the board should transfer funds uh, 100 and 111 and bring forth the modified reserve fund policy for B. Okay. So the, the presentation. Good. Man. Good for you, man. Oh. You just adjourn the meetings. <laughs> I just adjourned that live. <laughs> What's my job, though? Man? Well, you're too slow. I'm, um, I'm retired now. <laughs> we presented to the finance committee um, a potential upgrade to our reserve fund in 2019 20. Reserve fund was 120 days. These guys are horrible over there. <laughs> or it was 120 days. Uh, COVID, because of the um, cash flow issues that COVID brought on with um, having people not paying bills and, and basically a moratorium on, on those payments and not being able to shut people off and not being able to uh, you know affect the uh, bring in the revenue needed for those. Uh, the district went to a 180 day reserve policy um, because we're back to, excuse me, where we were pre COVID. The district is also recommending, staff is also recommending going back to the 120 day policy, which was uh, seconded by the finance committee. Um, again, I don't think it's wise to take the recommended action today due to the audit still not coming in as a final audit. I think that will be um, a better determination of when and how this reserve 
fund should be uh, administered. But um, I would like to just kind of open it up for a preliminary discussion from the board and from potential questions from the public and to see what uh, your take is on this. So when we do come back, we can come back with a stronger recommendation that includes both the board's discussion and the finance committee's discussion. This time I'll open this up to public comment. No comments for, or questions from the public. At this time, I'll now close public comment period and there'll be no further public comments allowed. Now there are many board members I'd like to, Michael. Okay, how much? Was it a surprise? No, 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 I, I, I think it's great. Okay, <laughs> yeah. I do. The um, numbers are in the, in the back page if you turn the page. Do what? The numbers are turned. If you turn the page, all the numbers are on the uh, staff report. That would be uh, the recommendation is off from one, two, or three, 120 day, 150 day, or 180 day. It's no. the numbers of. No, that's not what my question okay. has to do with. Mm -hmm. My question is how much are you holding in operating reserves right now? Dollar amount? Uh, approximately 1.9 million. 1.9? Mm -hmm. Is that the four, 434 a month figure? Do you remember? It's whatever we're still basing based on last year's budget uh, because last year? we haven't gotten the updated numbers. Okay, good. So what was the um, last year's per month number? I, uh, off the top of my head, I would have to do some math. Hmm. Okay. Well, it's based on the operating budget, so. So if it's 1.9 divided by six, that should tell us, correct? Approximately, yes. All right, did you do that or? You know, yeah. something else. <laughs> okay. uh, you're in, it came to 323. That's it? Mm -hmm. That's wrong. That's that's wrong. Oh, divided by five? No, six. Mm -hmm. You said 1.9, right? 1.935. It's 1,935,000. It's 1.5 that's in California class, and there's five or 600,000 in savings. So you're like one, 2.1, I guess. I'd have to, I, I, the numbers off the top of my head, I don't have. Oh. Well, well, the numbers are kind of important. Uh, I you understand. You were given those during the presentation. Uh -huh. it, you were given those during the presentation. I will, I, I can bring those numbers to you when this is being determined. Okay, I'd like to know how, how much you have. Mm -hmm. you, we're currently holding an operating sure. reserve. And how much a month, well, how much a month that's based on. Okay. It's Good. on the page right here, page two. First paragraph, last sentence. Sorry about that one. Um, so, what I think what Nick is talking about is that the surplus transfer to Fund 111 for CIP, those numbers are not concrete yet because we don't have the audit back. However, the operating reserve is based on this year's budget. Yeah. What we've budgeted for, this is actually a 120 day reserve, is 1.548, 150 is 1.935. 180 is 2.322. I'm not doing very good at explaining what I want or what my question is. So you can divide that by five. No, no I get that. Five and what I want to know is how much now. This is to increase it or decrease it or whatever it is that we decide to do. What I want to know is currently, before we do any of this, what is it? What do we have in reserves right now and how much a month is that based on? It's between 1.9 and 2.1, depends on how, when the bills we pay. So there's 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 a $1.5 million that's what well, the bills we pay should have nothing to do with how much we're holding in operating reserve. That should be yeah, a reserve. It, yeah, it, it was it, always in our savings account. Now it's in a high interest. Yeah, it does pool. because that's what we use to fluctuate. We, we still pull money to pay the bills. Right. And and as that, it, it doesn't really move up okay, and I down. See, okay, I see it just, right. those, so at the six month operating reserve is, is still our, our you know, cash flow, that's where the money comes from. And then when the county pays us our $900,000 property tax, that goes to offset those costs. Okay, so my question is, how much are you figuring on we have in reserve? So right, it's 1. between 1.9 to 2.1. It depends on, I'd have to give you the exact numbers. I could, I would, uh, it's based well, on how much. I don't want to know how much, because you, like you say, you're taking money out, you're putting money in, whatever. Okay, I want to know what is the figure? What is the amount that is designated as the reserve amount? Are you talking about the resolution that you adopted like this last year? Yeah. So 1.48 something. No, well, if, if it's based on six months, then it's 2.1. 
if it's going to be moving down, that's where these numbers would come in differently. So that would be 333,000 for six months. That's too low. That's not right. Yeah, I think right now it's like 480. Right. It was supposed to be like 434 back two years ago. Also didn't bring in a lot of money. Mm -hmm. I think this fiscal year 22. Well, it's based on the budget. You take the budget and divide it by um, 12, multiply times six, that's what your reserve is. Correct. That's what these numbers came from is the 23-24 operating budget. Okay. All right. Well. So right now we have, like Nick says, 1.9 to $2.1 million, give and take the billing cycles, because that's $600,000 we bring But in. the billing cycle got nothing to do with my question. Mm -hmm. But we're not depleting those funds. They're sitting there and it fluctuates. I, I know it fluctuates, but what's the target? What is the target? It's what you voted on last year, and I could let you There you go. We, we, so will, we will have that when we come up okay. with the target right, was right, and what the target will be. Okay. Yeah. Director Saunders. Last year in April. Oh, I can't do it. When it was 120, we were having cash flow problems. So it was 120 in a value that we can keep in reserve and not have cash flow problems. So as far as my analysis is, and also de de uh, relying on our investment fund analysis, it should not be. Because as they, they looked at our, our expenses and our bank accounts, and basically the lowest we fluctuate down to is, is approximately $600,000 in liquid assets. So at no point do we really get to where we should have cash flow issues unless we had an emergency and that's where this reserve would, would step in. Yeah, because 180 was at the high end and that's us putting half of our budget into reserve, yes. which is a lot. And, and, one, and 150 would allow for if 120 wasn't a reasonable number, so. And I, and I think 150 is also reasonable. Um, the recommendation came in from the finance committee at one point only because it was what we always had done. And if, if the board votes for 150, then I would say that that's also very reasonable. Mm -hmm. I think the goal is to, that we don't need to do six months of anymore because um, a lot of that stemmed from people not paying bills yeah. and our cash flow was way down because we couldn't shut people off. Mm -hmm. We had a moratorium. We had to still deliver services without getting any funds. Um, you know, we were able to send whatever we could to tax lien last year. And uh, I'll just, you know, kind of the update on that is you'll see at the public hearing that the tax lien is way less than it has been in the mm -hmm. previous years, even before COVID. Yeah. And I think that may also be due to a lot of the projects that, uh, grant fundings and programs go out to help people cover and people are also that is, that is realizing that if they want to keep their water they need to pay so that's uh has helped as well so people have caught back up the economy has caught up with everybody so that helps the other thing i wanted to add is um whatever we do vote on we do have the option if we do have a cash flow problem we can they can always come in and we can uh have an emergency transfer and get it back when we do get the uh, property tax assessment because that's usually a lot of the things the county, uh, the other agencies rely on that county money. And when it's late, that's when the cash flow problem comes in because basically that's all of uh, LAFCO's revenue. So if they are two, three, four months late, no one gets paid. So that's why operating reserves are in place. Rich Stone. To piggyback on that, when I look at this last year, there's three major unreasonable events that we got hit with. One was obviously the transfer of the tax reserves. Another was the transfer of, I think it was two hydro payments. Uh, two uh, SMUD payments. SMUD yeah. payments. And we didn't get our property taxes until the very end of yeah. the year. And then, and, of course, the fire. And I would say that through all that, we never ran out of money. Mm -hmm. We were but never. My question is with that, what was the low reserve that we got? I think that was down to about seven hundred and fifty to eight hundred thousand dollars. So this had nothing to do with COVID, and those are events that happened last year. And that's a context that I think we, as a board, need to look at. Yeah, is how close we got. Yeah, that was my question at the finance committee meeting. Uh, they addressed that and took that into consideration at seven hundred thousand. So then they thought four months should work. Yeah. So, In addition to that, we are looking at significant fire mitigation if the road goes out you need to rent. so those unreasonable events are not over 
Yeah, yeah. And we still have so that's um, the context I think we need to look at. And looking at we do have an emergency reserve for that too. So and we still have a, a investment emergency reserve that is the short term six to nine months is another you know one to two million dollars that we can uh, pull from as needed. But the recovery of that through mitigate uh, lit litigation, who knows when that recovery will be. We're we're so we're looking at I would say probably one year's time from today. No, so it's not. I'm sorry. That's surprising. It, 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 you know, um, we're kind of in the last stages of data collection on that, and then we're moving forward. So we're hoping that we get to do some negotiating soon. My point is that that's context from yeah. last year that we need to take into the current year. Okay. Um, so we're taking no action at this time. Mm -hmm. No, we'll just table it and then it'll be tabled with the audit. Okay. Item three approval policy 5305 environmental compliance. So that one has already been tabled. Okay. Public hearing. Okay. Direct charges ordinance 2023 certification of annual direct charges, fees, and assessments. Second reading. So the this is going to be a very brief uh, presentation. Uh, Maxine, I will say that we are trying to get to the end. Sorry. I use the bookmarks. I keep forgetting that. You're looking for clock, right? I, I have. <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm getting there. We're almost done. Uh, the. Uh, the good news is we're down to 46 customers that are going to tax lien, which is down from 99 from first reading. Um, and then I'll just have Jessica read the title of the public hearing and then we can open it up for uh, for public uh, uh, comment. Okay, this is second reading ordinance 2023-03. An ordinance of the Georgetown Divide Public Utility District stating the purpose for adding to and making assessments levied upon the land upon which water service was used in charges unpaid for an annual assessment district levies. So you can open it for public. I'll now open this session up for public hearing. Are there any comments from the public? It's now 3.58. Go ahead, Sherry. Um, I don't see the uh, current um, delinquent accounts in the The list was posted on the website about three hours before the meeting um, we had basically been updating it right away and and so the current list should be online but there's a list in the packet. There, is a list. there is a list it's a longer list and it's also posted outside so well, what's in the packet is the uh, gazette ad sure yes we, we, that ad. we gave the public until 10 a.m this morning to get their name off the list before it was put in the packet yeah. what's the name of this list Direct charges. Okay. And tax uh, tax roll delinquencies. Two thousand twenty three tax roll delinquencies. Okay. Any other comments from the public? No. Don't look. Nothing like online. No. We'll now close this to public hearing to close uh, at this point. Are there any board members that have any questions on this item? Are we really having the California Department of Forestry owing us money? Yes, unfortunately, <laughs> if they owe us money, we have to put them on. They're not on the list. Oh, well, a lot of these have been reduced. So okay, oh, should you should have an updated copy. copy. Huh. Oh no, that's fine. I just on the list in the packet. I that came a lot to me. Uh, yeah, Liz put out put the, the most refreshed one in front this of is us. This one that got published after the last one. Right. Okay, I just was happy to go through it. I was like. <laughs> the state can't we're down to 46 accounts. Um, it's totaling $15,868.56, which is we haven't had this least the we haven't had this low amount of counts since 2019, which is nice. So we're getting back to pre-COVID. And then out of the 46 accounts, 16 have been locked off most of the year. 25 of them went to tax them last year. So these are repeat offenders. Mostly. 
Any other board comments or question? We have a motion. Yeah, we do. Oh. We need a motion on this to accept it. I move that we accept the report. Oh, I guess it's a second. All in favor? What? Did you spoke? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All uh, aye. Passes unanimously, five to zero. And ordinance passes. We will now announce three closing the uh, public hearing at 4.02 p.m. Um, now we will adjourn to closed session at this time. We'll report out as required. We're reporting out of closed session with nothing to report. The time is 4.48 p.m. And I make a motion to adjourn. No, no, no. With this new agenda here, I just the script and the agenda. That's a little bit tricky today. We'll talk okay. two of them here. Okay. Change this up. Uh, board member requests for future additions to future meetings. I want this on the agenda for the next meeting. Yes, we already got it. Okay. Done. okay. And we already put on the. Um... I just want to make sure. No, we we got we got you. No better. Resolution for support for a board of reports collateral. That's what he just said. That's what it just said. You already got it. You're behind. We got yeah. that bad in. Oh. <laughs> All right. Okay. Adjourn. 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 Uh, Second. Adjourn. Next meeting date will be September 12th at 2 p.m. Okay. Yeah. So we'll get a motion to adjourn. Unanimous. The thing, yeah. Just hit the thing. All right, meeting here at 449. We broke another one. No, we're adjourned. Can I have one of those?